Today, like I said, I really wanted to dive into cardio versus lifting. Not really verse, because it's not like we're like pitting them against each other, but just like you really engaging in this conversation. Do you have to decide? Do you even have to work out? Do you have to lift? So some of the questions that I pose uh, in this post, you know, like a lot of times when people are in their reset, they will hear some recommendations to maybe slow down or reduce their cardio. So that's one of the questions is people are like, do I have to reduce my cardio? Like for the people who love it. And then maybe you hate it and you're like, do I have to do cardio? Like when I cut or something like that. So it's a little bit different depending upon where you are on the love hate spectrum of cardio, or if you even are on the love hate spectrum, just understanding where and how to get the most bang for your buck. So it really does matter. And then, like I say, a lot of people want to know, um, you know, like, will I get the same results either way? So like, does it really matter what type of workout that I do? You know, if I'm not lifting regularly, if I'm not lifting at all, will I get results? If I'm just doing cardio, can I get results? What about, you know, cause there's a lot of people who are just like, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to lift. <laughs> ever. So. Hopefully I will address all of those by the end. So I'm going to kind of just go over a few of the things that I have for you guys today. If I'm moving too fast or you need me to repeat something, as always, post your questions as they come up. I will try to get through the meat of most of it just because often we will edit these and then post it inside of your portal so that you can rewatch it later without too much extra chit chat because for a lot of people that's easier. So a lot of times I will like answer questions in little chunks of time. So I'll try to get through the content so that it's easier for the editor. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna, I didn't check. So I wanna make sure that I do a check really quick to make sure that we're all good with the recording before I get started. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this on the screen right now, the three M's. So we talked about this a little bit in our very first chat and this is something that we're gonna be addressing over and over. So whenever we're answering questions, I want you to answer them, whether you're trying to find an answer to something on your own, or you're asking me to always approach it from looking at the standpoint of these three things, which is mindset, metabolism, and muscle. Because those three things are always gonna to come together on this journey, and if they aren't coming together, or you're leaving any of those out, then typically when you're looking for what your missing pieces, it's gonna be one of those pillars. So it's really easy if you just start thinking about this all the way through so that every time you're approaching something, you're looking at it from that perspective. So muscle metabolism and mindset are the things that we're gonna talk about as it affects you know, your workout. So I'm gonna start, usually I would start with metabolism just because that's what most people want to know about. But I'm going to start first with the mindset aspect because you have to have this foundation of what you're doing and why you're doing it so that you can know how to do it in a way that's best for you. So I say the why, what, and how because those are the main questions that I want to pop in your head. Not only when it comes to talking about cardio or lifting or whatever, but when it comes to the questions that kind of come in your mind along the way. So like I said, we're looking at it from that perspective of the three M's of muscle mindset and metabolism, but the mindset portion is always asking yourself, like, why, why am I even asking this? You know, what is your goal and how are you going to apply that information when it comes? So just breaking those down a little bit more for anybody who is actually taking notes, which hopefully you are, you should be, because this will be your reference point as you progress through your journey. So when I say why, when I say why are you asking, like this isn't something to just fly by and just answer the question like, oh, I, I just wanna know, or as soon as you tell me, if I just know what to do, then I'll do it, because I hear that so often, and I know that I've said it before, when I'm trying to accomplish something like, if I just knew you know, what to do, then I would execute on it. Maybe, but maybe not. So really be honest with yourself. Why are you asking? Like, do you already have a bias towards what you want the answer to be? Because sometimes that's why we're asking questions. We're asking questions to like prove to ourselves that, oh yep, yeah, see, that's not for me. Or, you know, well, I'm not sure what she's talking about. I'm gonna need that. 
or well she doesn't understand me I need XYZ so if you're asking because you want to take action on the answer that's one thing but if you're asking as a form of procrastination maybe if you're asking um, just because maybe you're a knowledge hoarder <laughs> which if you're like me that is not uncommon so sometimes we just like to ask more questions because it stops us from having to actually take action but other times we're you know maybe looking for a way to skew the numbers so like we talked about last week is that that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people's resets fail is they skew the numbers they add in cardio just to offset the amount that they're eating because that amount seems so unrealistic to them and they're just like there's no way I'm supposed to eat all that much. So then people add in extra workouts, not just cardio, but they just add in workouts, period, to feel a little bit better about the number. Um, or maybe you're somebody who doesn't like the burn that you see when you lift, so therefore you do cardio. So really that's why I'm saying ask yourself why up front you're asking the question. If you're asking it because you want to take action on it, then that's great. Then you can move to the next thing. Or if you're asking because you're like, I don't know, I feel like I've been doing it wrong all this time. If you're asking to maybe even prove yourself wrong, that's one thing. But if you're asking maybe to prove yourself right, then that's something to consider. Uh, the what is, what is your goal? That is just as important as the why. Because yes, you want to say, I'm asking this question because I want to take action on it. But you want to make sure that you're asking the question as it pertains to your goal because it, it can be night and day the answers that you get for something if you want to lose fat versus if you want to gain muscle or if you want to be at maintenance or if you're just looking for like i just want to be generally healthy while focusing on other areas of my life like if that is what you're looking for then all of that's different so knowing what your phase is up front will help you to pick you know, knowing what your goal is helps you to pick your phase. And then once you know your phase, then you can ask the question within that realm. You always want to make sure you're asking the question within the realm of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So a lot of times we're saying like, will that get me results? Well, what are results? In order for you to know that, you'd have to know what your actual goal is and what actual phase that you're in because it's going to be different. And every phase has a completely different goal. So make sure that you're asking that first so that you understand how the recommendations apply to you or maybe why somebody else got a different answer than you if you're kind of lurking and watching so i know we've talked about that before but i really want to drive that point home that if you're not speaking up and asking your own questions then you may be led astray or you may just start kind of nitpicking based on your own personal biases and then wondering why something isn't working for you so the how of all of that is how will you or will you <laughs> apply the information? So like I said, going back to that why, like asking yourself, why am I asking this? Are you actually going to apply it? And how are you going to apply it? So if you're going to get the information and then go off and do whatever you want to do anyways, then that's the answer to your why and your how. Meaning you probably don't need that information. You probably just need to keep moving forward with whatever information you already have. Is the question just like rhetorical? Like are you just asking it because like, I just wanted to see, but I don't really plan on actually acting on it. If you're going to act on the information, that's one thing. If you're not going to act on it, like I said, question whether you're asking the question and use your efforts for something uh, that you actually will do. So the main point of the mindset portion of it is to understand like you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. So that is more important than having the answer. And that is why we did like the exercises where I had you guys like look at your personality types and things like that. You need to know you well enough to know that if I'm executing on that, it's gonna be maybe more short term for me or it's gonna be harder for me or I'm just gonna quit that halfway through because it's not worth it to me. And different personality types, you know, will lean towards one or the other. So like for instance, if your personality type ended in a P, then it may be a little bit harder for you to stick with stuff, except especially when it's like way into the future <laughs> because you're gonna be more inclined to want to do things that have a more immediate uh, return. So that means that usually, like maybe you need smaller steps, maybe you need quicker wins, things like that. So even if something sounds really good on paper to someone else, you may not realize that that person's personality type 
ends in a J, which means they're always looking at the future versus you're always like, you know, you can only see a couple of steps in front of you. So just some of the things that you want to take into consideration. And that's why it's really important with knowing yourself and knowing a, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do because we're all adults here, but it's important to know that you probably won't do anything that you don't want to do, at least not for very long. So always ask those critical questions up front because if you're being really honest with yourself from the beginning, it'll help you develop a method that works best for you personally, you know, and this is where understanding that, okay, even if I really truly do want to do that thing and it's maybe not how my personality type naturally is, that's okay. It's just so that you understand that, okay, if I'm not intrinsically like that, that thing is going to take more effort for me. So you want to maybe put it in a time of your life where you have space, mind space to be able to focus on that because it may take you more focus than someone else. The same way that something else may take, you know, them more focus than you. So that's why you have to know about yourself because just because something sounds good on paper doesn't mean that it's good or the best move for you in that moment. It doesn't mean ever it doesn't mean that you can't do it later. It just means it might not be the best move for you in that moment. So ask th yourself those questions. Be honest so that you know ahead of time how much focus it's going to take from you. So that would be the mindset portion. So like I said, typically we probably wouldn't think of those things, but I want you to go there first because the rest of it would probably be null and void, even if it sounds good <laughs> to you, because if it's not you, it's just not you. And that's okay. So the next M, so we just talked about, we talked about mindset. So if you did just jump on, we talked first about mindset. So lifting versus cardio is the discussion. They're not in competition, but we're just talking about how to work out in a way um, that is best for you and your goals. So talking about the three M's, mindset, muscle, and metabolism. Mindset was the first one. The what, why, and how. You know, how am I going to apply this? Why am I even asking it? And what is my goal right now? So that will lead us to how the workouts affect your metabolism because different types of workouts affect your body and your metabolism in different ways. So there's a lot of types of workouts and I probably should have put some on here just so that you can have them. But just so you know, most of them will fit in three categories, give or take. Usually that's how I categorize them, even though there's tons and there's subcategories for each. But typically you're looking at aerobic, anaerobic or recovery. So most things will fit into those. So whether we're talking about kickboxing or Pilates or boot camps or resistance training, whatever it is, they're all going to pretty much fit within those three categories and different types of each workout may fit in different categories. So for instance, if you're doing like, a boot camp that has weights, you know, that may or may not fit into the same category as strength training. So it really depends on the style. But typically those three are the big three that we're looking at, anaerobic, aerobic, and recovery. Recovery, you should be doing probably no matter what phase that you're in, just because it's super important and none of us are getting any younger and that's okay. But we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves. The best part about not being young is that when you're young, you think you know everything and you don't do what you're supposed to do. As you get older, you understand that you do have to respect your body and you're actually more open to doing the things that are good for you. So recovery should probably be in any phase. Now, aerobic and anaerobic, those are going to differ based on what we talked about before based on what you talked about, what you, those questions that you asked yourself, like uh, what phase you were in, especially, and what your goals were. So if your goal is, like I said, fat loss, that may be different from what you would do in a maintenance phase or in a, I just want to be healthy phase. Because when you just want to be healthy and you just like, I just want to like stay in motion or just get my 10K steps or whatever, like, that is night and day from what it takes to build muscle. Building muscle is probably the hardest goal. Um, most of us think that losing fat is, but building muscle <laughs> actually would be, in my book, uh, the hardest. Um, and then fat loss, same thing. Like it takes 
just a little bit different things from muscle building, but both of those are different from when you're in a phase where you're just like chilling. So uh, your main cardio types, you would either be doing like a steady state type of cardio, which is like going 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever on the treadmill, elliptical, whatever machine you're on. Um, most classes like step aerobics and stuff like that will kind of fall into that. And then you have uh, the anaerobic types, which is your hit Tabata, some of your boot camps, things like that will usually fall into that. And then you have NEAT, N-E-A-T, which is where a lot of these little devices come into play. So if you have like a Fitbit, Apple Watch, whatever, that is typically measuring your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Out of the types of cardio, that is one that most people don't realize actually helps their metabolism more. Most people would think that the longer bouts of steady state would help their help their metabolism more, but it doesn't. The steady state actually helps it the least. So if you're going 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever, you like to run, things like that, a lot of those things are great for endorphins or getting the blood flow going, stuff like that. Lots of benefits to your aerobic activities. Fat loss isn't necessarily one of them. Your metabolism uh, increasing or staying the same isn't necessarily one of them. So when you're trying to figure out which one affects your metabolism the most, anaerobic and recovery. Those are the two, those are the two that are affecting your metabolism in a positive way. Uh, aerobic, like I said, it has other benefits. It's just that metabolism isn't always necessarily one of them. So uh, if you're looking for somewhere to start and maybe you're somebody who like, I don't want to run or maybe you think you need to run and you're just trying to increase your metabolism and you're like, I'm not quite ready for the gym or whatever yet, then that person would start with just trying to increase their meat. So getting in, you know, 5,000, 8,000, 10,000 steps a day, that would do more for that person's metabolism, like if they were trying to rebuild their metabolism, than if they started running. So that's something that a lot of people don't think about. They're like, oh, I just wanna get in shape, and then they think to go run or something like that. Or people look at running as the alternative to lifting. They're not necessarily alternatives, they can complement each other, but they don't necessarily replace each other all the time. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, you guys ask questions if you have any. But when we're talking about getting your metabolism up through non-exercise activity that's like a uh, general like walking around your neighborhood maybe leisurely riding a bike again we're not talking about like spin class we're not talking about power walking we're not talking about like running so maybe if you like got on a treadmill and just kind of like puts the long <laughs> it could kind of sort of count but if you start getting like an increased heart rate that is moving you into the aerobic zone, especially when it's past 20 to 30 minutes. So uh, cardio typically lasts in longer than that, like we talked about, 20 to 30 minutes, usually is anaerobic. So if you're trying to do, I mean, it's aerobic. If you're trying to do anaerobic, which is good for the metabolism, hit Tabata, um, or just something that's super high intensity that you can't last more than 15, 20 minutes, those things would typically help to increase or maintain, well, to maintain your metabolism, not increase. The only thing that will help increase your metabolism is, like I said, strength training or NEAT, which I haven't talked about strength training yet, but the NEAT will help increase it more than even it will. So just a little known thing that a lot of people kind of ignore the easiest exercise that would fall under recovery. But like I said, that's something you could do. Like you could take a walk every day and that would do more for your metabolism than if you chose to run every day. If you chose to do hit every day, which please don't do hit every day. But if somebody chose to do those things thinking that it would increase their metabolism more, it would. The hit and things like that are going to maintain what you already have. So if you're happy where you are, then you could just stay there. If you are looking to increase, then we're talking about something different now. So just understand that maintaining muscle, I mean, maintaining your metabolism is done by maintaining your muscle mass. Increasing metabolism is done by increasing your muscle mass. So your muscle is going to play 
a huge role in all of that, which is why, like I said, we talk about all of them. So we talked about mindset, we talk about metabolism, but in order to understand where you're going with your metabolism up, down, staying the same, you know, then your muscle is gonna come into play. So that's when we move to muscle and how much. So hopefully some of this is making sense to you guys. I know those of you guys who have been around for a while, this probably does Add some things. So when we're talking about muscle, now it's stacking. So you talked about what your goals were. You figure those out when you're in the mindset portion. And now you're looking at, okay, these are the different types of workouts and how they apply to my metabolism and whether they're going to help it stay the same or not. And again, if you want to increase, if that was at all part of your goal, was you wanted your metabolism higher then now we're talking about muscle. Or if you wanted your metabolism to stay the same, we're talking about muscle. So we're saying, how much do you have? How much do you want? How much have you lost? How much of that do you need to replace? Because if you were dieting, then you were losing muscle. So a lot of people aren't thinking about that. So you want to think about how much have you lost? How much do you need to replace? How much do you need, like when you figured out your goals, how much muscle do you need in order to support you in reaching that goal? So if you're already at goal, then that means you probably don't need much more muscle to support it. You just need to maintain the muscle that you already have. If your goal was fat loss, but maybe you don't have enough muscle to be able to lose fat, then you need to probably switch goals to building muscle first if you've lost a ton of muscle because that is going to affect the rate of fat loss so you would want to build that up make sure you have enough muscle first and then you can go back into a fat loss phase and if you're moving into a muscle building phase then that's when you want to start asking those critical questions of like well how old are you how long is that going to take you to rebuild it if you need to rebuild it and are you willing to put in that time because most women you know they could accomplish their muscle goals in like one to three years if that were just focused effort muscle building but most women spend more time focused on the fact that they don't have muscle they don't realize they're focused on that though because they're spending more of their time focusing on the result that comes from not having enough muscle which is a higher body fat percentage but most people aren't making that connection that they're connected. So they're not realizing that the fact that I have a higher body fat percentage is because I don't have enough muscle. So the body fat constantly takes their attention and takes their focus and they're constantly trying to attack the fat instead of building up enough muscle so that the fat loss can come easier. The only reason your fat loss is hard is because you don't have enough muscle. If you have enough muscle, your fat loss is a lot easier. So that is typically how you would know. And if you've been dieting forever and ever and ever for longer than you care to remember, then probably you need some focused muscle rebuilding. And if you're not doing that, then you're just fighting an uphill battle. And that's the things that a lot of people don't realize that. So they don't put out those focus, that focused effort of muscle building. Or if they do, they do it in like little chunks here and there like they'll try it for a month and then focus on losing fat for three months and then they'll try it again for a month or maybe they're trying to like do these programs that tell them that they can like build muscle lose fat and do everything all at the same time so it's never actual focused muscle building if you focus on it and you just did that for one to three years you'd probably be good to go and then if you're somebody who didn't like lifting you know that's something that it's good for you to know that you won't have to do it for that long. <laughs> you could literally just look at it like school. Like I just have to get through this. If I can focus on building muscle for one, two, three years, depending upon how much you want. I mean, you can go up to five years, but typically it's diminishing returns after about the three, the third to fourth year for women. Then you're free to just do the things that maintain the muscle. You don't, it's not something you would have to do forever. So that brings me to, Putting it all together. So hopefully, you know, I know like it seems like, okay, here's all these pieces, but that is how they come together. Once you understand how they all three work together, you understand the critical questions you need to ask yourself. You understand that, okay, these are how workouts affect my metabolism. This is how much muscle I've lost and need to regain, or, you know, I'm 
straight. I just need to maintain my muscle. Then the question makes a lot more sense and you could kind of answer it yourself, you know, once you know that because you're making a decision that's best and informed for you. So if you're someone who maybe you hated cardio in the first place and you were just doing it because you thought like you had to, to lose fat, then you know like, okay, so if I take a break and I actually gain more muscle, then I'll be able to lose fat without having to add the cardio. Or, you know, you can just include cardio as a recovery tool. You know, obviously having a variety, like incorporating not just walking, but Pilates and things like that to just enhance the recovery of the muscle. So if you're someone who didn't like cardio, then, and your goal doesn't have anything to do with maybe like heart health or endurance or running a marathon or something, then it's not something that you have to force yourself to do. You can cut back until you're in a phase that requires it or you're going and have lower intensity forms of it just to, you know, be in general heart health or not at all. Like I said, just including, you know, some mobility and flexibility stuff into your regimen instead of thinking that you have to have these like dedicated cardio days. If But if you're someone who loves cardio, you know, and maybe you're going to like lose all motivation to work out because we talked about that with the mindset. You got to know yourself. If you love cardio and you hear that, like, that's why I say, what are you going to do with the information? If you say, Hey, do I need to do cardio? Ask yourself ahead of time. What if she says, don't do cardio, but I love cardio. I'm not going to be able to stop. So therefore you either think that, okay, well, this isn't for me, or you think that you're a rebel and you're just doing it anyways. Like, even though you're like, I'm not supposed to, but I'm going to do it and, you know, not get the same results. So you want to know if you're going to lose all your motivation by cutting out cardio, then don't lie to yourself and say that you want to cut it out because you're just going to, it's going to be like, any other diet thing, you're going to do it for a little while and then you're going to rebel and go do what you actually love to do because you love to run or kickbox or whatever it is. So if that's the case, then you would start evaluating, okay, so how can I use some anaerobic forms of cardio, which like I say, anaerobic is now your like hit Tabata high intensity, you know, intervals or just interval type training. How can I start using some of those to give me, uh, you know, maybe I can use cardio like as a reward for lifting, like a okay, family lift a day and then do cardio a day, or I'll throw in a little bit of hit at the end of my lift day or something like that. Like you can start using those things in a way that helps you to stick with it in a way that helps you to keep going, you know, but you're making sure that you're still eating enough to support that. Remember, we talked about that's why you're asking yourself those questions. Are you just doing it because you think you want to burn more calories? If so, you still got to eat. So don't do it just to make up for the eating. Um, you could also then, like I say, incorporate the days as needed to make sure that it works for you. And then you also know because you've taken all that stuff into consideration, if you know like, hey, I need to be in a muscle building phase, the phase that I need doesn't require that much cardio, but I need to run three hours a week or whatever, then you know that either if you're going in the excess zone, like where the scales are kind of tilting towards you're doing more cardio than you are lifting, then your muscle building efforts will just be a little bit slower. It doesn't mean they, they won't happen at all. It just means they might be slower, and that's a choice that you're making as a grown adult and that's okay <laughs> because you love running or whatever it is. And so because of that, you're willing to go a little bit slower at a pace that you can actually stick to versus completely putting the thing that you love to the side and only being able to stick to it for a very short period of time. Or that's kind of the way that you work it. It's like, okay, I go, I know that I can't last more than like three weeks. So you go like three weeks of whatever, not doing the cardio or something like that and then you give yourself a week of whatever fun if that's fun to you cardio is not really fun to me but i get it and i get that a lot of people do need it so you can work it in whatever way. there's no wrong way to do this and if you're somebody who do wants who wants help then i'm more than willing to help you but these are ways that you can kind of figure some of that stuff out for yourself so